Hello and welcome back. Today we are continuing our Crusader Kings 3 run here in the Princes of Darkness mod. We are playing as the Grand Demon. No longer peaked in high school. We peaked last episode when we founded our very own Empire title. Uh, so of a new Lacademon. Lacademon. We're really not sure how it's pronounced. We just know that it's ours. Uh, and this is what's important. And so we had a really strong come up. We are still trying to go after our absolute uh, rival arch nemesis and we would show you them on the map but uh, they've disappeared from owning any territory the schism of the remaining of Italy uh, broke apart leaving just these kind of miners up here uh, and so he will fade into the background for now I think for now uh, we will in fact have a little bit of a think in regards to you know our religious conquests we now have three of the main religious sites which leaves just these two here and so our conquest will start to take a turn towards this as we turn towards gaining supremacy over the rest of this uh you know earth here and bringing everyone under the dominion of wrath and so this is what we'll be doing this episode or at least trying to move in this direction we have some reorganization to do we have a whole lot of prestige and piety we probably should be spending these at a higher clip and so we'll be trying to do that uh as we move forward we have in our empire two great generals, and I think what we're going to do is we're going to give each of them a kingdom. The first is Hannibal Barca, who I think is supposed to have an entry uh, as far as uh, his character goes, uh, but we don't see one here. But we will grant him the title of that he rightfully owns of Africa. Uh, since we're now an empire, and we can do this without uh, things kind of coming down, we will not grant him the individual counties. We want to keep those, uh, but five vassals will be transferred over to him, uh, and he will have supremacy over Africa. We will also transfer the Duchy of Gabes. Actually, hmm, this is our player error. He's pretty caked up. Uh, and we don't mind having a 55 prowess guy uh, kicking around, but what we are hoping is that uh, this additional strength allows Hannibal to start pushing into to hurt all by himself. The secondary person we are going to grant access to is the one that is nicey, nice and themey. This is a fellow god of ours, uh, except they are a vampire um, instead of being a demon like we are. But they are currently um, acting as our, uh, what is it, uh, they are our counselor. They are on the council for being our marshal. Um, they currently have the best marshal out of anyone in our realm, other than us, of course. Uh, and so what we will do is we will grant them the title of Hellas, the kingdom of Hellas, um, which will they'll gain supremacy over. We're not losing any really, really good vassals by doing this. Uh, and so, and we will be giving them a nice uh, supremacy over here. Now, I think that, oh, that's kind of a little borogory. Uh, that's maybe not what we want. Uh, we will be transferring over people if we can uh, in a way that makes sense. Uh, but these are the two primary and strongest uh, people in the realm now, we hope. And we hope to keep them that way uh, because they are going to be useful us for us from now on. Um, Hannibal's probably not going to be the best learning guy overall. But, you know, we can't not have Hannibal have a counselor spot. So this is what it is. And already Hannibal's out on his own waging war for the county of Gautames here in Africa. We also do see uh, quite a few wars kicking up this way. Uh, one of them is this guy appears to be losing uh, this war as well. Uh, for a little county over here, our duke is going for this, uh, which will be nice if we could start eating into to hurt without having to do anything ourselves. I don't think uh, I've seen, yeah, uh, Artemis is just laying low and we're expanding over here. Um, or we just expanded over here, starting to push our way uh, into the east, back where everything all began in Mesopotamia. I figure if we're going to start traveling to Mesopotamia, we could use a bit of a guide. And by a guide, I of course mean the great adventurer himself, Gilgamesh. Um, who is one of the OGs. There is quite a bit of character lore. Let's take a look at the character lore before 
Um, you know, we try and wake his ass up in his lifetime. During the 4th century BCE, Gilgamesh was a king of the city-state of Uruk in ancient Sumer. According to the Toreador scholars, uh, there was a feud between the Toreador Antediluvian and the Gangrel Antediluvian over ownership of the Tablet of Destiny. After some heated battles, Gilgamesh was sought by Erikel, Toreador, who proposed uh, to embrace the mortal if he would aid her in her struggle against Enkidu. At the same time, However, Gilgamesh had already been tempted by Enoia uh, to choose the side with the Gangrel instead. It is said that the Toreador and Deluvian had to flee the pair, but it was not before unleashing upon them a great monster known as the Bull of Heaven. When Enkidu managed to slay it, Gilgamesh fell into torpor during the battle. And so we have Gilgamesh, who is a Gangrel, uh, powerful vampire. Very, very strong. Uh, we're going to try and wake his ass up. So we're going to say the Thralls, we found where he lies, but there's a whole bunch of mercenaries uh, defending the place. Uh, we will choose to charge in. Somehow we could possibly... How is it that... Oh, it's a martial challenge, not a prowess challenge. All right, a messy victory. We spend some uh, prestige, and we will get our next event. We want to awaken and recruit him. You won't refuse my offer, dear sir. We have a 94% chance of succeeding, 4% chance of him just flat out refusing, and he is our cord, uh, courtier. Uh, somehow, okay, there we go. I was like, where did his stats go? It's like, there his stats are. Very nice stat line, quite a bit of prowess, very strong. Uh, we, of course, will want to convert him to our, you know, religion uh, with tempting, uh, and so we'll be doing this sort of thing uh, as quickly as we can. Uh, actually, who is this on? We're tempting this guy here. I think this guy can wait. We do have a pin in him, and instead we will tempt our dear friend, uh, Gilgamesh, and try and bring him over to our religion. I think a time has come for a divorce. We have, for this entire run, been married to pride. However, I feel like what we want to do is we want to, instead of, uh, you know, allying ourselves with these other demons, we have transcended them. We have reached another level, and so I think that we can abide by this alliance no longer. And maybe we get a different type of alliance, but in either case, we will be divorcing. We will be divorcing. Smell you later. We will divorce her. Now, she still kind of likes us because we're both demons. We're still kind of both on the same side. Uh, but we might, in the near future, go for her kingdom. Now, why can't we conquer... Why can't we do kingdom-level conquerors? I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that. I think it maybe it has to do with our culture changing. Uh, maybe we had a culture thing that was unlocking um, our ability to do it, and since we swapped cultures, we no longer have that. I'm not sure exactly. Require one less level. We have Quarrelsome, so in theory we should still be able to do it, and we're already max level, so I don't know why we've lost it. Maybe it's just not showing it because we still have to wait some amount of years until it becomes available. I don't know. Expansion is slow and steady. We did see a kind of return of our uh, kingdom CB, uh, but we need to have an adjacency before we can go for Mesopotamia. We'd like to just go for Kua straight up, but we cannot. Uh, and so we are fighting our former wife here. It do be like that sometimes after a divorce. Uh, and trying to gain, working our way kind of over here through this territory if we can. We will have to put down a thing. Uh, put down a revolt as well, which we constantly get, but they'll they'll go for the capital, so this will they'll come to us. Um, we do get an innovation; it's not very good. We'll say it's magnificent. We'll lie, uh, but this guy uh, is our already our cultists, and we'll probably give him a decent chunk of this land um, that we are about to take, and so this will be nice for us. Well, she's just a cat, bro. Um, but this is going to be kind of the plan, uh, small ball wars as we expand. And another thing we're doing is we're starting a quest to steal the Holy Grail. It's going to be the greatest heist in the history of heists. Uh, you know, it's not going to be useful to us, but we're stealing it because we can. We have come over on this side and we have given the Byzantium architect, uh, Lord Bizar, whom we have kind of been chasing around for a few episodes now. Uh, we finally managed to get him back in our kingdom, back and converted to Wrath, uh, which is going to be nice, and we give him the lordship here. I think that eventually, long term, um, 
okay, the Duchy of Thessalonica has some people who are pretty good, um, but since she has an area that's outside of this domain, I think that what we could do here is maybe look to... She's okay. Oh, she's pretty good. He's going to maintain his um, control of his stuff because he's Corsica-based. Um, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to eventually uh, form or usurp the kingdom here and give it to Bizar. Uh, that is the kingdom of Thessalonica, uh, which will be pretty nice in terms of giving a, a nice big kingdom. And in this way, we have, you know, he can push north here. Um, the uh, woman who we assigned over here can push south into Syria. Hannibal's already pushing both east and south from here. Um, we do have one more person in Hellas. Uh, she hasn't really engaged in any wars as far as we could see. She's very strong now. Look at her prowess. Mm, very scary. Definitely going to be scared of her. And, uh, you know, Hannibal looks like he's got a couple allies as well. Um, he has a truce with, uh, yeah, he's allied to Menelaea, which is kind of a significant one because he has a lot of prowess. So when he gets on the battlefield, he does a lot of damage. And so um, we are starting to establish lordships uh, that can expand in their own right um, rather, rather well, uh, which I don't know if this overrides our truces, but uh, we only have one more war to do. We have to wait for this truce to go down and then we go for the kingdom of Mesopotamia. However, we can't declare this. We can only declare this once every 50 years. I'm not sure exactly what the cooldown is because we kind of just used one on the guy over here. Um, I think in theory we should have our conquer Mesopotamia war will somewhat soon, but I think we want to take this in one go. Uh, so maybe we kind of cool our jets and try and deborder gore this area at least a little bit. This one's pretty gonna be gonna be pretty nice. This is the word we were looking for earlier. Dynasty legacies. Uh, we're gonna unlock Infernal Aura, which will give everyone following our religion plus five stewardship, except for us. Uh, they are drawing power from us, uh, but we are gonna see massive upticks in everyone's stewardship, which is going to be really good for um, you know accumulating money. Everyone, uh, you know, our. The people under our command are starting to become very, very, very strong, um, you know, in their own right here. Uh, and so we have, like, people... Well, she doesn't have much martial. Big sad on that one. Uh, and so uh, these guys will be quite, quite, quite good. Yeah, look at this. Almost uh, above 20 in everything uh, is uh, the dear Lucita de Aragon. So we managed to get this gentleman here, dear Bizar. Uh, this other area here in Thessaly, eventually we'll give him the title for, uh, I think, the, the kingdom. The thing is, is we kind of don't want to turn over this guy, uh, who's fairly good or has really high prowess. We'd rather just not turn her over, but I don't think we have to. So I think what we could do is we could come in here uh, and we can look, take a look at one of the counties, go to do this. And we cannot usurp uh, someone currently fighting a war, uh, and cannot uh, do it if they consider our faith hostile. Okay, if they control any lands. So I guess we'll have to, uh, you know, take more lands out from him. But it's time for the Great Caper. The Great Caper, the Great Steel, because we are going to take the Holy Grail. Now, the Holy Grail as an item uh, allows, uh, unlocks unique decisions for vampires. Um, I know that part is probably covered up by the my screen, uh, but it unlocks unique decisions for vampires. So this is not particularly useful for us, uh, but it's not about, you know, drinking from the Holy Grail, it's about sending a message. Um, and that message is, we're probably gonna get caught, uh, but uh, you know, it, so it goes. Uh, let's see how, 66 is pretty good here. We can get up here with 80% of nothing happening though, uh, with a prowess challenge. Um, and so I kind of like uh, just scouting out here with the prowess challenge and we do find a key to the vault We're gonna need two keys. I think it said uh, we should probably read. Okay. We have one of two perfect uh, And so now we can come back in I think this is a free location uh, This one will be able to see a lot 69% is pretty nice um, Hmm But this one's free Let's take this one, Hidden Passage, and another 69 here, and we find a second key to the vault, which is going to be perfect for us. So now we can unlock the vault. Stewardship is easily our worst, but... Well, actually... 
we know it's... Let's actually head back this way. Prowess challenge we excel at with 100 prowess. And now we found the priceless treasure. The Holy Grail itself uh, is right here. We will take it. It's so simple. Allow me to explain. Nothing happens, and then we were we are out. We tooted it, we booted it, and we are on our way with the Holy Grail. Uh, another win for the Great Ares Conspiracy, the adventurers themselves. Uh, all four of us now, or five of us? Gilgamesh should really be in here, huh? I, that's a huge miss. If there, if any is, if anyone's part of the, the conspiracy, it should be Gilgamesh. So maybe we could actually deter and add Gilgamesh in. I think I like having Helen of Troy in there um, because she has much more intrigue than we do. We're kind of not very good in the intrigue and or the stewardship department. So in theory, we would want high intrigue, high stewardship. Um, and so uh, Helen was makes a pretty good one here, but. Um, we do get the Holy Grail. I think we might have to unpause, or do we just get to see it? Yep. Uh, so, uh, monthly true faith lifestyle experience, uh, and unlocks unique decisions for vampires. Unfortunately, we're not a vampire, so, um, nor do we have a true faith tree, unless something horrible has happened. Yeah, we do not have a true faith tree, so this doesn't actually do anything other than get to sit on our shelf. Um, because this is, well, it's truly the best item at all, because... Let's just double check that we don't have a, uh, something that says, oh, Holy Grail, Commission Artifact, Book of Nod, Caravan Master, Study, Escaping, Expedite, House Colors, Lure Infernals, Twist Fate, Twist Fate's how we get a lot of money, more money, Invite Claimants, Pet Shadow, the cat, we do, do, we do like to pet the cat, here, let's actually make that so notify when that becomes available but uh we cannot do anything with it it's just a, a useless item for us again though it's about sending a message and the message is we can take what we want we're a dark demon of desire let's go baby as part of our great and growing religious empire i think we're going to found a religious order uh we're going to find it next to rome because it'll have a lot of development i think this helps them uh and this will hopefully or a holy order allow uh our our various subjects to pull these guys up in their offensive wars and uh, push out on their own. Um, obviously, we can win a lot of these wars on our own, and it's not like necessary for do doing this. Um, but um, I think it feels a little bit better and a little bit more themey when they get to do this with some assistance from our holy order for the sin of wrath. And so I think this will be nice. Um, also, we see that they're kind of coming up against a little bit of a head with Tahurt. And even it says that we would, the balance of power is not particularly good for us for Tahurt, but we do see we have 37 knights. Knights are the main driver of power here. And their knights, uh, their knights are, they have 35. Ugh. I don't know uh, if they have anywhere near as much uh, valor and stuff as we do, but um, maybe we need to break up to hurt if we want to allow uh, our subjects to expand without our explicit help. So maybe this is something to think about here. So there was something we've been kind of keeping an eye on in the background and haven't been talking about it too much, and that is our Torment Demon Path, uh, where each one of these gains us uh, uh, not to, uh, the the stuff that they give is not too useful uh, at the higher levels I think that we gain a little bit of prowess the max hostile schemes is nice uh, but we're already capped out on prowess so it doesn't really matter but something that this does do is it unlocks our ability to get new perks um, which have been previously up until now locked off from us because we don't have a torment level of 10 for example on this one uh, we could not get it and so I think that the now that we're at a torment level of three there's a few that we haven't had before that we can now get like the perfect lie um, and so this is going to be useful and every time we torture someone we get one experience in this so we're just mass torturing our prisoners now um, every 10 experience we increase a level uh, and so we are going to need to torture uh, eh, like a hundred plus times uh, in order to get to this max level it will also be nice to get um, not the prowess, because the prowess is useless at this point, but once we get to level 6, this will be nice for the max hostile schemes. And a little keen on learning uh, what, if, what exactly we get from the ultimate horror. Um, 
Uh, oh, it's not even a form, it's just dread gain, natural dread. At this point, our dread will be, like, capped out constantly. Um, there's a couple others that I think we haven't gotten yet, like, one or two others. Um, but, uh, because we haven't, we don't fill the requirements. Uh, but I think they're, like, level 5 or something. It's a little bit hard to make sense of the UI. Sometimes, oh, like this one, yeah. Uh, we had not gotten dread decay. And I think that that's actually kind of it. Um, other than this one that requires us to get to the 10th level. So uh, we will get to the 10th level. We'll also click every single one. Of oh, there we go. Arsenal of the Beast is also unlocked. We can take a quick look at that shapeshift option here. So we'll come in here, we'll shapeshift, and we'll see what Arsenal of the Beast gives us. Uh, I think that we'll probably stick with this angelic form because we like the diplomat scheme power. Uh, it's been pretty useful for converting people to our cause so that we can get them. Uh, but if we would lose this, we would gain wings, which would give us prowess, which is useless, but travel speed. Um, okay, uh, I think we're going to just not do that, but it gives us a little, at least another little option. We win a quick little war here. Um, the forces were somewhat even, but we just clapped them like near instantly with our knight advantage. And then we found her kicking around. Uh, she was uh, from the lust path. Uh, so we were able to invite her to court uh, and then uh, turn her into a vampire. And then once she was a vampire, uh, we convinced her to switch back to wrath all pretty quick. So now she is in pretty good shape to maybe become the Queen of Tehurt here, because her stat line looks incredible. Uh, the only thing we maybe don't like is that uh, she's disloyal, which is okay. I mean, she joins factions against us, and she's a queen. It's, like, kind of not too big a deal, uh, considering we're immortal. Uh, but these guys have definitely been kicked down a peg here, um, and so we hope that uh, our, our forces will be able to operate there uh, much better, uh, you know, with mainly Hannibal leading the charge. Uh, you can see he's slowly taken out some of these territories here. He's gotten, I think, two counties, maybe three from here. And this guy has uh, taken one county down here. Up here, uh, we do see the Duchy of Ancona, uh, Lord Kristoff, who did gift us the very, very nice sword. Um, he's pretty strong. He has 50 prowess, and he's managed to conquer a second duchy, like, in its entirety. Um, this was not one of our duchies, and he's picked it up, so... Um, that's pretty good for him, uh, and puts him in pretty good shape. Uh, there was a little bit of a push a while back, uh, up north here, but this is not, uh, too, too new. And other than that, uh, the vassals haven't really taken too much land, uh, but not that much time has passed. Also, very nice here, we have a two-province kingdom, uh, if I'm not mistaken, on the, uh, kingdom of Cyprus. It's just Cyprus. Uh, and so the plan is to install our house here, and then release them, and it's install our house on Crete with the same idea of having these independent kingdoms uh, that are of our house that uh, will allow us to generate a lot of renown. Uh, we're at the max level of renown, piety, and prestige here, and we got a lot of ransom requests as well. We'll kind of uh, ransom everyone out. It seems like people are a little bit more keen on paying ransoms uh, more often. Oh wait, what is this? The Beloved of the Moon? Hopefully we didn't give a... Hopefully we just ransom someone instead of giving something back earlier. Uh, we can take a look at the, what the Beloved of the Moon is in here. Uh, all court artifacts. Uh, the War Banner. Where is the Beloved of the Moon? Is that another item? Oh, did we accidentally give it back somewhere? Where's the Beloved of the Moon? Yikes. Maybe we accidentally gave something back to someone. Oh well. Um, the expansion continues of the Great Empire, New Lacedaemon. I know this episode's going to be a little bit short, but it's going to be getting a little bit late for me. And so, uh, it's, uh, and I like the continuity of doing these all in one session. And so, uh, we will be concluding the episode. But before we do, I just wanted to kind of show off um the rome in particular has a unique buildings for every single slot it seems like we can't build in these slots uh but for each of these other slots we do have unique buildings we have the talking statue a recently unearthed statue of a Gr some greek hero the citizens of rome are using it as a notice board posting anonymous criticisms satirical poems pretending it's statue speaking 
it's giving us a hostile scheme power, personal scheme power. This is pretty strong, um, uh, you know, and if we upgraded it, which we can't yet, uh, because we need to uh, use propaganda, character interaction, Sedites who have upgraded the Sedite District of Roma to Tier 3, or characters who have uh, upgraded to Pasquito in Eternal Rome to Tier 2 allows you to use, remove one of your criminal uh, traits in exchange for prestige. Um, I think that it says that we need a schemer or have a spy master with at least 20 intrigue sitting on the council to do it. We do have this. It might be locked behind vampires only for upgrading it. Um, we have the aqueduct here as well, um, uh, which is we need uh, to have an architect or employ a royal architect with excellent aptitude, which we do not have access to. But if we did do that, we could upgrade this uh, much higher fort level, um, with some PD per month and some tax per month. Pretty solid building. Uh, and then here, uh, we have to have a scholar or an uh, antiquarian with excellent aptitude. I think we might have this, um, but uh, we would get up to 5 right now a month. That's from 5.5 to just 5. 50% holding taxes, mausoleum of Hadrian. Um, and so let's actually just check and see if we could do that. Scholar or antiquarian? Because that's a big one, right? So let's take a look uh, at if we could do that. So scholar or antiquarian? Or employ an antiquarian? I have a feeling that this might be uh, stuff that's just strictly for vampires is my, like, concern. Do we have an antiquarian already? No, we don't. Um, where are you? Mr. Cupbearer. That's not where we were looking for. This is not... Uh, here we go. Uh, we only have up to good, so we need to get someone with more learning. Man, he has so much learning. Uh, the problem is he doesn't have anything else other than the learning. He doesn't have, like, shy plus learning. Or, yeah. So maybe we gotta go back to the drawing board to see what is required on these. Um, but that is an interesting one. So we could try and find a shy guy with high learning, or try and figure out what else is needed. And then here, we need to have a senchel with uh, excellent uh, uh, aptitude, which I don't think... I think I thought we might have had one of those. No. Uh, we are trying to only employ with excellent aptitude, which is probably unnecessary. But the thing is, is these guys don't die. Yeah, we we don't have an excellent one. We see that uh, Gilgamesh is doing pretty good with the high stewardship, as is uh, Adela. So, I mean, maybe we could employ her for the purposes of getting things higher and higher. But I think if we if we pull down a, a, a new person with really, really high stewardship, we can just appoint them to that. Uh, but this upgrade is also pretty good, moving from 0.5 prestige to 5. Uh, I don't know what's needed to construct these buildings that are blank. Um, and then there is the Eternal Rome itself, which is giving us uh, diplomacy levels per fame. Uh, monthly renown 15%, plus one domain limit, which is incredibly strong, uh, men in arms regiments. And so this is pretty cool. Um, I think that this ha city has the most unique stuff uh, as a, out of any city. Uh, I suppose we'll find out soon enough when we go after uh, kind of the birthplace of everything. Uh, I think we'll be doing that next episode. Um, I'm not sure how long we have on our Holy War for Kingdom cooldown, but I think we would like to take all of this in one go. So this is the war we'll be looking for next time. Uh, until then, we'll try and baby our uh, various uh, you know, kings across the finish line so they can expand some more. We did transfer over this uh, subject to Hannibal, so to make Hannibal a little bit stronger, because he wasn't getting the full shebang he should have been getting from Africa. Um, we haven't made the kingdom up here yet. It's probably fine. Oh, because we can't usurp. We also can't usurp here. Otherwise, we would. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. YouTube algorithm thing. And have a good day.